welcome back everyone, I'm K Plays Games. this is EVE Online and we've had another update to the game. This one is really rather good so I'm going to give you a bit of a guide to it. What we have been given is an extension to the tutorial system which is called the Air Career Program. You can find this by going up to the Neocom menu to Activities and it's right at the top, Air Career Program. And this is what it looks like, you got a cool new UI. This is an extension to the career agents, split into four different careers, industrialist to, which I'm sure should be industrialist, maybe they'll fix that. This is still very new, it only came out last Tuesday the 28th of June 2022. There's still some bugs and things wrong with it, but they're working on it. So we've got industrialist, which is all your building and science. We've got enforcer, which is essentially your player versus environment or PVE, you versus NPCs. We have explorer, which is scanning, hacking and travel. And soldier of fortune, which is, I want to say PVP, but it's like player interactions, we'll call it. We'll do a deep dive into all four of these in just a moment. So what is the whole point of this? A it's to give new players opportunities to do new things they might not have done before, which is very similar to the old opportunity system we had, but opportunity system never paid you anything and this does. And B, it's for older players to get free skill points, because as we see there is a bar down here which has different skill points marked in it. There are actually four rewards, again this is a, a broken part of it, there should be a fourth one at the end which is 125,000 skill points if I mouse over the bar. We'll see that if you collect 750 career points, and this is split between all four of these careers, 750 in total. Like you had 200 in this, 300 in this and then make up the rest with the other two. As soon as you get 750 career points, you're rewarded with 50,000 skill points. When you get 1500 career points you get another 75,000 skill points. This is additive so it's not like you get 50,000 and then another 25 to take you up to the 75. You get 50,000 and you get 75,000. The other end of the scale, when you get 2250 career points you get 100,000 skill points and again when you hit 3000 you get 125,000. Add all these together and you get 350,000 skill points which is pretty damn good. And in addition to that, if and when you get 750 career points in a single career, you get an extra 100,000 skill points. So 100,000 times 4 is 400,000 plus the 350,000 you get from this. That's a grand total of 750,000 free skill points just by doing basic tasks. Now even for older players that equates to around 2 weeks worth of training which is pretty damn good. For a brand new alpha clone character with no implants, this will be about 6 weeks worth of training, which is quite a large amount. On the left this tells you which rewards you've earned so far and which ones you have to claim. They will go down here into the redeem system. When you start doing this, you will find you will get dozens and dozens and dozens of rewards and you won't even know what you've done to get them. Because the way this is set up, is that you don't have to do one task at a time. Every single task is being monitored and counted for you as you go about your daily life. So you'll get given rewards and you won't even realize you've done a task. So let's dive a little bit deeper into this. I think we'll start with the industrialist one. It's a very intuitive interface. You just left click to dive into it. Here we are. Aura can give you hints and tips as to what to do. You just click on her or click an empty space to make her go away and click on her again to bring her back if you need help. This is all the activities you have to do and these are again further split into tasks within these activities. So the very first one you're asked to do is to go and do all the career agents. Again a little bug, this used to be in order clockwise and now it's all jumbled up. I'm sure they're going to fix this. So you just left click on it and you see what reward you get. So when you complete the second mission of the Entrepreneur Career Arc, you will get 50,000 interstellar credits and 20 of these career points. It says it's low risk and it's estimated it's going to take you 10 minutes. Little bit of advice from Aura there. So let's just click around the wheel. Money, career points, money, career points, money, career points, money, career points, money, career points. This is pretty much what you'll get for most tasks. It's just a whole load of money and a little bit of career points. But some things give you 
other rewards, like this one. When you complete Producer Mission 10, which is the end of the Producer Career Agent, you're given an Industrialist Expert System. Now, they haven't put an information icon here, which you can click on, which will tell you what this is, and you can't double click on it, and you can't right click and show info, which is a little bit annoying. But what Expert Systems are, is that they instantly give you skill levels. Not skill points, they just instantly give you these skills. And this particular one only lasts three days, and after three days, these skills are then removed from you. So it, essentially, it gives you three days to try out things, and then you'll figure out whether or not you want to add them to the skill queue, and actually permanently train them or not. It's pretty cool. You can buy expert systems on the EVE store for cash, but you get this one for free, which is pretty good. Bear in mind, it doesn't actually give you the ships or modules that these skills unlock, it just gives you the skills. Again, we'll just keep going around the wheel. Money, money. This one, Entrepreneur Mission 10. No extra awards, just money and career points. To go back to the activities, you just click in the middle and you go back a stage. And we'll move on to market. Again, essentially, this one is just earn a million isk on the market. So sell stuff worth a million in total. Because you don't have to do 50,000 and then 250,000. It's all just part of the overall task of earning a million isk on the market. Again, we'll just click through. See, yeah, you actually get a skill book here. This is one of the trading skill books. And we get some temporary boosters. I believe these last about four hours. These will come in handy for completing the rest of the tasks. Salvage. This is essentially salvage 50 wrecks. That's easy enough to do. You get some security missions, you kill everything, you come back with a ship fitted with nothing but salvagers, and you salvage them all. This does not take long. Not long at all. And there's a skill book there for rigging. Resource harvesting. This one's quite interesting, actually. So we see mine 49,000 units of Elspar, 14,000 of Plagioclase, 16,000 of Paroxeries, 30,000 of Scordite, and 4,000 of Kernite. Now, this might look like quite a lot. I mean, 49,000 sounds quite a lot, but when you actually look at the volume of the ores, because every ore in the game does have a different volume, you will find out that each of these totals comes in at just under 5,000 cubic meters, which is great because the Venture Mining Frigate has a mining hold which holds 5,000. So you fly out to an asteroid belt, you mine Velspar till you're full, you come back, and that's it, done. And then you go back out and you mine Plagioclase, and that's done, and the same with Paroxysis and Scordite. Now, Velspar and Scordite can be found anywhere in high sec. Pyroxides and Plagioclase are also both high sec, but they're not both found in the same places, as we shall see here, or locations. You only get Pyroxeries in Amar and Kaldari Empires, and you only get Plagioclase in Galenti and Mimitar Empires, so that's quite easy. All you'll have to do then is just fly across the border, hit up either Pyroxeries or Plagioclase, fill yourself up once and come back. Now, Kernite can be a little bit more difficult to find. As we see here, it's only found in Losek in Amar, Galenti and Mimitar space. But, luckily for us, during the career missions, there is one mission which has about five or six thousand units of Kernite in it, so you can do it during that mission. Just make sure you actually mine out the whole mission, because I do believe that mission doesn't actually want you to mine the Kernite. I think you only kill a couple of NPCs and then come back. So if you knew about this before you did the career agent mission, then you would remember to mine the four thousand units of Kernite. So you can do this in high sec as well. And the next one is refining, which is just literally reprocess all the stuff you just mined. Very, very easy. And the rewards for this, for Veldspar, you get light combat drones. I think this gives you a couple of Hobgoblin ones. I can't really remember. I'm, I'm blitzed on this stuff. I can't remember what I got given. Here's an afterburner. There's a medium shield extender. So what, what ship do we know that has a compact afterburner, a medium shield extender, and a couple of combat drones. That's right, it's the fittings for adventure. They've actually put some thought into the rewards, which is nice. And what do we get for refining? Here we are, we get a frigate blueprint crate, which will give you a random blueprint copy. I think it's only one run for a frigate, and this one gives you one for a cruiser. And this one gives you one for a destroyer, which is pretty cool. This one doesn't give you anything, and neither does the Kernite. 
So why is it giving us blueprints for a frigate, a destroyer, and a cruiser? Well, if you click on our next task, which is manufacturing, we'll find out. Manufacture a destroyer, manufacture a cruiser, manufacture a frigate. Easy. And because we've literally just mined and refined quite a lot of five different ores, we should have a decent amount of minerals. You probably still will have to buy things like Zydrine and Megasite, but at least you've got a head start. As it says, estimated time, 1 hour 40, because that's how long it will take you to build a frigate. Same with the destroyer, 2.5 hours, and the cruisers, 3. But that's really simple. Manufacture a shuttle is a little bit of a problem, because during the career agents, you are asked to build a shuttle, but the shuttle you build in that doesn't count because it's only a civilian shuttle, so you will have to get a blueprint for a shuttle and build it yourself. I'm pretty sure the frigate you build during the career agent does count, so this one will already be done. Right, next up, distribution agent. Complete 20 distribution agent missions. If you watched my video on distribution agents, you will know how fast they are. I'll put a link to that up in the top right hand corner. Very, very quick. This will not take you long at all. Uh, money and points, money and points. There's a skill book, money and points. And there's a hauler blueprint which is pretty cool. I'm not sure why you need it, because the two career agents, both of the career agents in the industrial activities give you a hauler. So you'll have two haulers and a blueprint to build another one if you, if you need it. Now this research one actually ties into the manufacturing one. If you remember, I said we would need to buy a blueprint for a shuttle. And that's good because the research task asks you to buy a blueprint. So you'll buy a shuttle blueprint if we have a look, type in shuttle on the market and search. Shuttle blueprints are only 50,000 esque. And by now you should have earned way more than that from the air rewards. But there's one available in this station right now. Easy peasy. And then I would suggest the first thing you do is that you make one copy. And then when that copy is made, you use the copy to start the manufacturing job. And then you use the blueprint original to do these two tasks, which is Research it to 1% material efficiency and 2% time efficiency. Now, making a copy and doing the material and time efficiency will take about 4 minutes each. This is very, very quick to complete this one. So that is the industrious activity. I actually put the hard grind in and I actually got all 1000 career points of this career in about 8 hours. It's not difficult at all. Onwards to Enforcer, player versus environment. As we see, this is literally just do all 10 missions for the career agent. And it will give you money and career points. Anything for mission 10? Yeah, more expert systems. So that will be more skills for 3 days, which is pretty good. Security agent, complete 20 level 1 security agent missions. This might take you a day day and a half depending what ship you're using and how fast you get and which missions you get some are more difficult than others so we see we get a social book for this and during that you get another social book so and another social book there so you are being given skill books which is really nice and the next one abyssal dead space this can take quite some time the first task is enter a tier zero abyssal dead space combat site well, that's easy. And the next one is complete a tier zero abyssal dead space combat site. As we see, you're given filaments crate, which gives you more filaments to get into the abyssal dead space. Tier zero are called tranquil. So if we look for tranquil on the market, here are the filaments. Now these are not seeded by NPCs. These are players setting these prices. So you may have to shop around, but they're not all that expensive. And you will find other filaments inside the Abyssal Dungeons themselves. And the overall aim of this is to complete 5 tier 0. This one at the top, kill 30 Triglavian enemies. This took me quite some time. Because the enemies in the Abyssal Dead Space are randomised. And I got a lot of pirates, a lot of Edencom, a lot of rogue drones, and very very few Triglavian enemies. I had to run a lot of Abyssal Dead Space sites to get these 30 kills. But I did do it, and it wasn't difficult. Again, I have done Abyssal Dead Space on this channel before, and I did it in an alpha character in a Tech 150 cruiser, and I'll put a link to that in the top right-hand corner of your screen now. 
and I'll show you the fit I used to do this. This is the fit I used. It would still work with Tech 1 weapons. The Tech 2 just give you slightly more DPS, but it is all Alpha. This is all Alpha gear. Alphas can train all this Tech 2 stuff. Tier 0 Tranquil Filaments are extremely easy. I never ever had to, to use the Medium Ancillary Armor Repairer. Never used it at all. So you don't even need that. So that was the Abyssal Dead Space one. Next on to combat. This is pretty easy. Destroy 300 enemy ships. That sounds like a lot, but you will be surprised how quickly you get this one. Run a few combat anomalies, run some combat missions, you'll easily hit this. Again, you get more boosters. I'm not quite sure what the Rapture booster does. Let me see if I can look it up. Yeah, that gives you faster capacitor recharge time for four hours. Not a biggie. You've got acceleration control. There's another skill book there. And there's a destroyer skill crate. So you'll get a random skill book for a random race's destroyer. It's not always your race. It's random. Bounties. This again is easy. Earn 5 million isk in bounties. Again, just run lots of missions and you'll very quickly rack this up. Very simple. Frigate skill crate. Frigate crate. This actually gives you a frigate, not a skill book, not a skin, not a blueprint, an actual frigate. So that's quite nice. Combat sites. Complete 25 combat sites. Now this is not combat anomalies. It does mean the sites that you have to scan down and enter. Not that difficult to do. Again, if you've watched my exploration videos, which I'll put an example of in the top right hand corner of your screen now, you'll see how easy it is to scan things down and to run these sites in high security spaces. Very, very easy. As soon as you do five of them, you get a shield booster. Then when you do 25, you get 100 millimeter armor plate, which is quite useless actually, but there we are. This is the one I haven't done because I I'm waiting for my timer to run out. You can redo an epic arc every 90 days and I'm about four or five days away from my next run. And this does, does specify it has to be the Bloodstained Stars, which is the Sisters of Eve rookie epic arc. You can't do this by doing any of the level three or level four epic arcs. It has to be the Bloodstained Stars. There are 50 missions or 54 missions in total in this arc. You get a random defense system skill crate, so it'll either be shield or armor. If you have really good skills and a really good ship, you can complete the entire Sisters of Eve epic arc in about two and a half hours. If you're new, it'll take you a couple of days. Market. Easy. Spend the one million isk on the market in total. Well, that's easy. Just buy some blueprints and modules and ammo. You will do this without even thinking about it. Get another frigate, which is nice. Standings. As you're doing all these missions, you'll easily get this. Increase your standings with a corporation to 1.0. You can use skills to do this or you can just grind missions. Very, very quick to do this. Very quick indeed. And more skill books, money and career points. Loyalty points. Earn 500 loyalty points. Loyalty points are something else you get as you do missions. So you'll rack these up without even thinking about them. And then I want you to spend 300 loyalty points. Very easy to do. So that's all your PvE activities. I haven't quite got a thousand. I've got everything but the Epic Arc and that will be fixed in a few days. Explorer. Again, the first thing you do is all five of the career agent missions. There's the rewards. Very easy. Another expert system. Scanning. Scan 50 cosmic signatures to 100%. Very easy. You don't even have to enter the sites. All you have to do is to scan them. Very, very easy. Again, more points, you get a frigate skill crate. Again, that will be a random frigate. And you get an actual frigate. Again, so I think this is the third actual frigate ship we've been handed during this, which is fantastic. Hacking. Again, hacking is very easy. You will have done hacking in the career agent, so you'll know how to do it. Again, you just scan some relic or data sites. Go in, hack the cans, grab the loot get the points. Easy stuff. And you get a couple of rigs for doing this, which improves your hacking abilities. Very good. Right, advanced hacking. Now this is one I haven't done yet. Hack 20 containers and wormholes. Hack 20 containers and losec. Hack 20 containers and nosec. Again, this is all high risk because these are lawless areas of space. You can and will be hunted down and killed by players. 
do it at your own risk. Wormholes. Scan 15 wormholes. And as we know, we were asked to scan 50 cosmic signatures to 100%, and wormholes are cosmic signatures. So you'll find wormholes accidentally, as it says. All you have to do is scan them, you don't have to go through them. Very easy. You'll do this as a byproduct of doing this. Gas sites. Now, this one is a little bit broken and a little bit cheesy. Because during their career agent missions, I think it's the fourth or fifth one, the agent gives you a gas pass key and asks you to scan down and enter a gas training site. And as soon as you work to it, it counts as entering the site. And when you get to the site, there is an acceleration gate there. And once you take the gate and you land in the second room, it also counts that second room as another gas site. So that's two sites already. As soon as you've taken the second gate, the game realises that someone's in the second room and it counts the site as finished and as soon as you warp out it will despawn and then it will respawn another new gas training site in the same system because in the career agent systems there will always be at least three of these gas training sites in the system at any one time and crucially the gas pass key that the agent gave you is not consumed when you activate the acceleration gate so what you can do, you can scan all three sites, warp to them, and go through the gate, and that gives you six gas sites, and then they'll all despawn, and then you'll scan the three replacements, and do it again, and do it again. So within a matter of about 10 minutes, you've done this, you've done all 15 sites, because it's a little bit broken and a little bit cheesy. Do we care about it? No. Will we take it? Yes. Combat sites. This is easy. Enter a combat site. Very easy. All you have to do is to enter them. You don't even have to complete them. Just warp in and then warp out if it's too hard. Very easy. This will not take long. Navigation. Make 25 Stargate jumps. Make 50 Stargate jumps. Or make 100 Stargate jumps. You'll do this without even thinking. And you'll be very surprised at how quick you do it. Advanced Navigation. Visit a high sec system in five different regions. If you've done the epic arc, you will have done this already because it takes you to every empire region. Now, for some reason, the game thinks I've been to five null sec regions, but I have not. I have not left high sec at all this week, but the game somehow thought I did and gave me five out of five. This is obviously broken, but I'll take it. I'm not going to complain about giving 50 career points and 125,000 disc for no reason. I have no idea when this happened, but the game thinks I've been to Nosec and I have not. And again, visit five low sec systems in different regions. Not difficult. And Project Discovery. This is something I haven't actually touched at all on my channel. And you find it in Activities. A Project Discovery. And Project Discovery is essentially helping with coronavirus identification. And what I want you to do is to find clusters of little dots and draw boxes around the borders of them. So I think that looks like one big cluster there and then a smaller, more spaced out cluster here. So you draw boxes around them and you click submit. So we almost got it right. This gold box is what Project Discovery wants you to draw and the white ones are the ones we did draw so apparently we should have just reduced this one a little bit and gone up there but that's that's as easy as it is you just draw boxes around the clusters click submit you get paid and that's it simple do that 50 times and you've done this task it does not take long at all you get an expanded probe launcher and eight combat scanner probes which is pretty cool so that's all there is for explorer now let's have a look at soldier of fortune as I said, this is more like player interaction rather than actual PvP. Again, we start off with completing all 10 career agent missions. Is this one actually in order? Wow, look at that. And again, you get expert system at the end of it. I don't know what the skills are it gives you. They last three days. Social. Send a message in chat. Well, that's easy. Send an email to a player. Join a fleet. You can make a fleet with yourself. Easy. Add a new contact. Easy. Join a corporation. Again, easy. Electronic Warfare. This is when you get into the PvP stuff. Target Paint. Five different 
capture their ships. Capture their means players. So you've got to target paint five players, weapon disrupt five players, webify five players, warp disrupt five players, warp scramble five players. Now these are all aggressive acts. If you do them in high sec without having the right to do so, the Concord police will show up and they will kill you. So you're going to have to find a friend and maybe initiate a duel with them. Or if you've got two Omega status accounts, log in your alt and do it to yourself at a safe spot. Again, the rewards are all skill points and boosters and skill books and all kinds of good stuff. Frigate skill crate. Combat. This is fairly easy. Kill 75 enemies with a frigate and it has to be a tech 1 frigate. I tried it in interceptors and assault frigates. They don't count. It has to be a tech 1 frigate. This will be done very quickly. Kill 75 enemies in a destroyer. Again, it has to be tech 1. Very easy. And kill 75 enemies in a tech 1 cruiser. This might take you a little bit longer to train up to a cruiser, but hopefully you've earned so many bonus skill points that you can inject yourself straight into a cruiser. Again, very simple, very easy. PvP, this is basically kill 5 players. Again, if you've got an alt, you can do this to yourself. Capacitor Warfare, very much the same. This is either transferring energy, which is what Drain means. Drain means using an energy in Nosferatu to suck capacitor energy from an enemy and give it to yourself. And Neutralize means just deleting it with a different module. And so both of these are not difficult. Again, you can do it with an alt or a friend that you trust and will duel with you, because dueling is one of the thing here. Participate in 15 duels. Again, you can do that with yourself, with an alt, or with someone who you trust. Bear in mind that dueling is to the death, including ship and pod, so don't do it with an expensive ship or a jump clone that has implants. Faction Warfare. This is a little bit more advanced. Join Faction Warfare which you sign up for by going to activities, factional warfare, and you either enlist yourself or if you're the CEO, you enlist the entire corporation. Then you're in a permanent war with two entire empires and every player who is a member of the militia of these other empires can and will kill you even in high sec. So be careful with this. Most of the faction warfare stuff is done in low sec, so it's pretty risky stuff. Complete a level one faction warfare mission. Again, that's in low sec. Kill one capture there, who is an enemy in the war. Pretty easy. Capture a complex. These complexes are fairly easy. The anomalies, you go to the anomaly, you walk through the gate. There's a little beacon there. As long as you're within range of a beacon, a timer ticks down. When the timer reaches zero, you've captured it. That simple. And again, defending is just the same. Like if someone else is capturing one of your complexes, you go in and chase them off. Simple. Support. This can be done in player versus environment or player versus player. Again, it's just repairing shield, which is these three, and repairing armor, which is these three of another player. Now, I did the shield one just by fitting a really cheap remote shield booster onto a frigate and warping around all the asteroid belts in my system. Came across lots of mining barges under attack from NPC, target locked them, and repaired the shields. I did it in about 10 minutes, because repairing shields is not an aggressive act. So that was really easy. Armour is a little bit more annoying, because most mining ships can easily tank these NPC, which is why the players weren't even reacting, because their shield will regenerate faster than NPC can kill them. I was just topping up the shields. Now to repair the armour, again, you can go in a fleet with someone in the mission, wait for them to get into armour, and then repair them with a remote repairer. I mean, two and a half thousand isn't v very much armor to repair at all, so you'll do this very quickly. Destruction. Lose one ship. This has been ticked because in one of the career agent missions, you're sent on a suicide mission. We well, are actually sent on two suicide missions, but only one of them counts for this purpose. Because one of the suicide missions, your ship is packed with explosives and essentially it detonates itself. So self-destruction doesn't count for this. And as it says here, corvettes are free, so they won't count. So you can't just click board my corvette, get a new rookie ship, go to a mission and let yourself get killed. And it won't let you do that with a shuttle either. So if you really, really want to get all this stuff here, what you will do, you will buy 15 of the cheapest frigates you can on the market, go to a, a mission, let yourself get blown up 15 times. It's that simple, very easy. So that was a very quick overview of the AIR career program. 
It's a really good system. I do like it. They've put some thought into the rewards. It gives you 750,000 skill points. You can do it in a couple of days. You can grind for stuff as much as you want. Most of the stuff you will do without even realizing you've done it. It's really good fun. And speaking of grinding, if you want to keep track of something, you can click track here and then it will show up on the info page here. See, I actually have managed to repair 14 points of someone's armor. <laughs> Love it. It's going to take me ages to get this one. But you don't have to track it for it to be counted. As I said, it will passively count everything as you do it. Hope you enjoyed this little video and I hope you come back for the next one. Until then, have fun. See how many skill points you can get from this. Until we meet again, take very good care of yourself. I will talk to you again soon.